Hey, it's Terry with Early Girls Yarn. I am back working on my Nanelchek Swancho by Boylan Knitworks. Um, so I've got my cast on, my tubular cast on, my eight rows of ribbing, the first little color work blip, which was this awesome yellow and blue, which I'm loving. Now I am on to what for this section is color, according to color one, which for me changes all over because as you remember, I'm using four colors, um, one, two, three, four, and my main color. So I'm just doing the, the shaping, the, um, the back of the neck short row shaping. Now I will say I typically follow patterns pretty um, precisely, but in this one, I did make a change and wanted to talk you through that. I've already done one of my short rows. Um, so she, Caitlin calls for the wrap and turn. For me, the wrap and turn is not the most efficient or effective. Um, it leaves kind of, I just don't like the end fabric. It leaves, I don't wanna say a hole, but kind of like a little hole. So I use German short rows. So I'm sure you can see, I'm trying to get this up high enough. So do you see where it's um, thicker and then it's just one row? of the purple. So right there is my German short row stitch. It looks like two, but it's not, I pulled it. So I'm going to knit to four stitches before and then do that again. Now at this point, I know I also kind of teased that I would be showing you how I do my version of gauge swatching, which, spoiler alert, I do not gauge swatch. I've knit enough, so I'm not saying this isn't efficient or the correct way to go, but when I do my gauge swatches, like you're supposed to, they always seem to lie to me and I don't get the information I need to have a great garment. So, um, oh gosh, uh, it was in Vogue Knitting Live. Um, I did a class with Stephen West from West Knits and he said, you don't have to believe in the swatching lifestyle. You don't have to partake in that. So I don't partake in the swatching lifestyle in the traditional sense because I, it just, it doesn't give me good results. It, I swear those darn swatches lied me. What I have found to be successful. Oh, now see, I went too far. Here's my wrap and turn stitch, and I was supposed to stop four stitches before, and this happens sometimes, so I'm gonna do is make sure I've got one, two, three, four. I just kinda go backwards, no big deal. Now, um, I would turn my work to purl, so what I'm going to do is take the last work stitch, let's see if I can get it up closer to you, I'm moving it over to my right hand needle, cause I'm purling, and I'm gonna pull it tight so that I pull that stitch all the way around and I'm gonna bring my yarn back because I'm gonna purl. Now, I don't know if you guys do, but I knit onto my left hand needle. So I would just do one stitch and turn it around. And then I, how I purl in the round is I just knit onto the left hand needle or flat really. I don't really purl a ton. Um, there's techniques to learn how to do this much better than what I'm gonna show you. They've got the cool overhead cameras, which maybe I'll invest in one day, but I'm not there quite yet. So you just get this kind of funky angle from me for now. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna purl till four stitches before my next one and then do the same thing. Um, but what I was saying is, so what I do, cause my theory is I like to knit, number one. So if I make a huge mistake and have to rip out work, Oh, well, I like to knit and I'll just knit it again. Um, but I've had to do that only one time. Um, I've knit enough to kind of know, like for DK weight, I didn't do what Caitlin did. She did size four for this and size six for the main body. I'm doing five and seven. I've just knit enough with DK weight to know that that's usually gets me um, the gauge that she suggested for her pattern. So that's what I am doing right now. And then what I'll do, let's see, let me move the stitch marker. So I have to keep purling till four stitches before my um, German short row. But as you can see, as I'm doing the short rows, my stock in that section is getting bigger and bigger. So I'm gonna keep working my German short rows um, until I get my stock in that section, till that's done, um, and then I will, I'll show you, I will measure it. 
um, with my tool I love, and that will allow me to know how many stitches I'm getting per inch, and then I'll adjust accordingly to see if I need to go up or down a needle size. If I wasn't doing a color work pattern, I would then decide if I needed to, if I like the fabric, because I do like this fabric, I like how it's looking, that I would um, just decide if I needed to like decrease a few stitches to get the right width. But because this is um, the way this pattern is written and the way that it's got so much ease, I'm less concerned about that, more concerned about trying to hit it so that I can uh, make sure I'm on the right needle for this pattern. So yeah, I'm just gonna go until four stitches before and then I'll show you the wrap and turn this way. It's actually easier because I knit on the left-hand side, so technically I should have my work turned around and I should be purling. Um, but as I said, with the way I knit, it's not, it doesn't quite work that way. So this wrap and turn's really easy with the way that I do it. Um, but as you can see, I put my left-hand needle through the stitch on the right-hand needle and then I wrap it and pull it off and that's my purling. Um, I will say it's made my, it saves me so much time. Oops, that's what happens when I talk. Um, it saves me so much time um, and really has been a lifesaver for me. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four. So four more stitches to go. One, two, Older. All right, so then all I do to do the wrap and turn this way is I move my yarn from the um, back to the front, move my stitch over, pull it back, and now I knit back. <laughs> 